Let's have a look at creating a black and white photo. When we have a RGB image like you see here, there's three color channels. There's red, green, and blue. Now traditionally, some people had thrown away two color channels to create a grayscale just out of one channel, but then when you do that, you throw away two-thirds of your color information. Or shall I say your tonal information, because each of these three channels laid on top of each other produce a full color image. But each of these channels have important information in the tone structure of the photo. And I say this to tone structure, that's the black and white. So it's best to keep the three channels and then just mix how much of R, how much G and how much of the B channel we want to mix in there to create the perfect grayscale mix. Now Lightroom doesn't allow you to throw away the two channels, thankfully. It uses some very intelligent tools. And what we're going to do is we're going to work with those tools right now. We're going to go from color to grayscale. And then when we click on grayscale, you're going to see this black and white image. Now there's a lot more we can do to this than just doing this simple conversion. We can really take some control over it. One of the first things to do, notice here that there's not a lot of detail here in the shadows. There's a little bit of um, headroom on both those ends. So we're going to just hit the auto button. And then the auto button brings in a little bit more contrast. Now because these are working on the basic RGB channels, we can actually do some stuff here with the white balance. Notice as we change the white balance, it changes the way this image views. If we push it more towards the reds, it has a different appeal than it does towards the blues. Sorry, more towards the yellows there. So we just want to move until we find a sweet spot. Look at this detail in here. This is what we're looking for right now. Just about right there is a good spot. Then we're going to adjust the tint. Just till we find a nice good mix. Notice things change a lot as you change these colors. And then just hit auto again just to balance everything off a little bit. Now that we've set this basic stuff here in the colors, let's move down and we're going to start playing around with the colors. And when I say colors, I mean the tone colors, the black and the white, not real colors, but the actual tonality. So let's pull the exposure down a little bit because it was too bright. This thing we want to do is let's push the contrast up a little. And the contrast makes the whites whiter and the blacks blacker. Notice if I turn the contrast down, very washed out pull it up it makes a much stronger image. Let's push a little bit in the blacks there because that's always nice in a black and white photo. Notice that I've really filled in this area here but we can bring that back by hitting the fill light that'll open up those darker areas of shadow there to allow us to see some stuff. Now these highlights are really blown out so let's push the recovery slider up. And Notice as we do that that makes a big difference particularly back here and in the clouds. So let's just pull our brightness back a little bit more because we're going to increase our exposure. As you keep playing around with this, you'll probably keep coming back to the exposure because changing these other settings will change the overall tonality of the image. Let's go down to the clarity and let's just push that all the way up. That'll just give us a lot more pop and snap in our image there. So let's push the contrast up a little bit more. And we probably want to open up the exposure just a little bit more. And there we go. That's not looking too bad. We've got a much better black and white conversion than when we just hit the black and white button the, or the grayscale button. See how we can just play around with this and get this exactly how we want it. Now, what if we want to add a little bit of a sepia tone? Well, this is how I would recommend. Just go down to the split tone. Push the balance all the way to the right because we're going to work in the highlights. Then we can change the hue, but before we change the hue, we need to pull a bit of saturation up there. There we go. So the saturation shows us some color, and the hue chooses the color. So let's move the hue over, get a little bit more. There we go. That's a much better color. And we could push the saturation up high if we wanted, but I think it looks quite good. Just low, just a little, just a little touch of color there gives that a nice feel.